Hello everyone. My audible and visible. Let me check. Then we'll start. My audible and visible. Let me confirm. My audible. Right. Let us start. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Academy of Physics, Doctor. Daria, I am in the Faculty of Physiology, and I am your Faculty for Physiology. Ah, uh, some announcements. Hello, beta all rounder medico. Hello, mm. very nice name, all rounder <coughs> medico. Good, appropriate name. Welcome to my class. Okay. In five minutes after introduction to our academy, as well as some of the announcements, we will start our class. Okay. So, one announcement is with one year and more subscription, you will be provided neat PC note. That is one. Second, if you are taking one month, one year subscription, you will get a six month subscription or extension of six month subscription. Hello, you can use my code ZIP10 to get 10% extra discount. That is another announcement for today. We have two kinds of subscription. All of you are knowing plus subscription. I'm not going. Second is iconic subscription. You can choose any of them. Okay, we have. Very good neat PG uh, toppers as well as FMGE toppers. Okay? Also, we have added certain features in the special class, made the class interactive and live. Have poll for the learner, raise the hand facility, never miss the class as you are always not right for the class. Okay? Then uh, you can not properly never miss a class. Uh, okay. You can also get lecture notes, PDF notes are available for lecture. You can there and at any time. Okay. Another announcements are one is a need PG 2022 IQ batch will be starting from March 2nd to May 2nd. That is for two months. Focus the FMGE uh, this uh this 2022 comprehensive batch that is also for two months. So you can join any of them. These are the other batches. March 2 uh, November 2. Nine months we have focus FMG 2022 comprehensive batch that is starting next 2023 because as all of you are knowing that now need PG is next instead of need PG that is known as next. So for next, also if you wish to prepare, there is a batch for one year. Okay, need PG 2022 all educated vision batch is also there from 2nd March to 2nd May that is for two months. Those who are planning to appear for need 2022. So all uh, educator revision batch as well as ultra fast revision batch also are start. Need PG image based question batch as well as PYQ batches there for 15 days. This first started. Okay. Uh, this is for four months and nine months. Focus FMG December 2022 comprehensive batch and focus FMG comprehensive batch for four months. There are also different batches now. Subscription, you can get any of the subscription, either plus or iconic. Okay? And as I told you, prices are hiking soon. So we also no, don't know when your prices they rise. So get your subscription. You can use my code dip 10 to get extra 10%. Okay? Another announcement is you can go to app and you can uh, take a quiz for yourself. Okay. Today's quiz, this is the code for today's quiz. Okay, you can get the quiz. Join the quiz. Okay, after clicking this, you just enter this number 646481. Okay, and you can join the quiz. Participants are needed to join the quiz. Okay, so this is about our uh, uh, next. Now we start with our today's topic. Yesterday we discussed about cardiac output, one of the very important topics for uh, undergraduate. Okay, cardiac output, what is cardiac output? What is stroke volume? What is your 
cardiac index, cardiac reserve, and all we discuss. Okay. Now one topic is left, small one. That is various factors they affect cardiac output. That I will take today. Factors affecting myocardial contraction. If any factor increases your myocardial contraction, that definitely increases your cardiac output. Okay. Now today we'll discuss certain factors and their mechanism of action. Try to remember this mechanism. Very important thing. Easy to remember. Always sympathetic system increases cardiac output. Parasympathetic. Okay, now, so let us discuss how sympathetic as sympathetic diseases, epinephrine and norepinephrine. These are also known as your catecholamines. This catecholamines they act to beta one adrenergic receptors, okay, and they act to cyclic AMP. Now, how cyclic AMP works? That we will discuss. But Whenever catecholamines are there in our blood, this catecholamine increases your myocardial contraction. And as your myocardial contraction increases, your cardiac output increases. That's it. Now, how this cyclic AMP works? Cyclic AMP is second messenger. Okay? So, how it works? This cyclic AMP has two mechanisms. Number one. One mechanism of action of cyclic AMP that is it increases calcium entry inside the cardiac muscle cell from extracellular fluid. Okay? Suppose this is your cardiac muscle cell, this is extracellular fluid. Cyclic AMP they increase calcium entry inside here. Okay, fine. That is one thing. Second thing is this calcium entry from sarcoplasmic reticulum although sarcoplasmic reticulum is less developed in cardiac muscle but from sarcoplasmic reticulum also calcium entry uh, cardiac muscle cell so ultimately what does it do it increases calcium ion concentration in the cardiac muscle cell and calcium ions are very very important for function mainly cardiac muscle okay? so this is the mechanism and of action of cyclic AMP and all other factors they act through cyclic AMP. As I told you, catecholamines act through cyclic AMP. Okay? Sympathetic nerves. Sympathetic stimulation again releases epinephrine and norepinephrine. Same action like catecholamines. Okay? So these are the factors. Other factors are drugs. Certain drugs like caffeine and theophylline. These drugs, they also increase myocardial contraction. And you can see here, this is the stroke volume and diastolic volume. When the contractility increases, definitely stroke volume increases. Okay? So how this xanthine, like caffeine and theophylline work, they inhibit the breakdown of, inhibit breakdown of, of cyclic AMP. So what happens? Again, cyclic AMP concentration. And as we have discussed, cyclic AMP has two actions. Number one is it is calcium ion entry from extracellular fluid, and second from calcium ion entry from sarcoplasmic reticulum. So thus it is myocardial contraction. This is the action of xanthine. Second is glucagon. Xanthine inhibit the breakdown, and glucagon increases the function of cyclic AMP. The cyclic AMP functions are increased again muscle control. Next drug is your digitalis. How does it work? Digitalis, it inhibits sodium potassium ATP. When sodium potassium ATP, what is the action of sodium potassium ATP? Yes. Sodium potassium ATP is causes pumping of three sodium ions out and two potassium ions in. So now what happens when this is inhibited? Sodium concentration inside increases. Okay. And when sodium concentration inside increases, the membrane remains depolarized. So what happens your calcium ion will not go out so ultimately calcium concentration and what happens when calcium concentration increases this calcium ions they increase muscle contraction okay fine this way various drugs as well as various other factors they increase myocardial contraction next is factors that decrease myocardial contraction which are they? One is parasympathetic stimulation, that is your vagus. Now, when vagus is stimulated, parasympathetic activity increases. Okay? 
and mainly this parasympathetic has action only on the atria not on the ventricle so it increases atrial contraction not the ventricular okay that is one when myocardium itself is depressed when heart is depressed heart is not working what happens myocardial depression decreases muscle contraction that is intrinsic myocardial depression second third when there is myocardial infarction infarction means there is necrosis because of blockage of blood flow when blood flow is blocked necrosis of that cardiac tissue and this cardiac tissue will not be able to contract properly and not be able to produce cardiac output hypercapnia increase ca carbon dioxide hypoxia decrease oxygen and acidosis increase h plus this also decreases cyclic amp and as cyclic amp decreases action decreases okay then certain pharmacological drugs overdue overdose of the anesthetic drugs okay barbiturates barbiturate anesthetic drugs then p phenidine sorry this drugs they have negative inotropic inotropic means related with force of contraction so it decreases force of contraction okay so this way it decreases muscle contraction and decreases cardiac output. okay fine now we discuss about how cardiac output is measured okay so cardiac output is measured by two ways number one is direct method and second is indirect method. now this direct method that is you not you in human being it is used in experimental animals why in experimental animals because here we require invasive procedure here what we have to do require electromagnetic meter that is placed here here this is your ascending aorta here flow meter is placed so whatever amount of blood pumped by the heart that is measured so directly cardiac output is but this is invasive procedure so it is not performed in only it is performed in experimental animals okay so now there are various methods so many times this question is asked how to measure cardiac output okay so direct method or invasive method and second is indirect or non invasive method direct method that is fixed me me principle that is direct as well as indirect okay in the indicator di dilution method and indirect methods they are echocardiography ct scan and radio nuclear nucleate imaging or you can say mri okay, so many other methods are there we will discuss one by one starting with first one that is fixed principle now what is this fixed principle this may be asked as a short question so many times what is fixed principle fixed principle denotes that you can see suppose suppose there is blood flow to any organ so how can we measure blood flow for measurement of blood flow that is measured by dhruv chauhan hello beta uh, you are from rajkot pdu college hello welcome to my class okay wish you are getting uh can understand good welcome to my class i hope and if you are not understanding because we have started through we have started this classes since uh, two months from uh, yes yes yeah, huh. i understood i am also there only so because if suppose you are not getting because uh, we have started our syllabus from first of january okay and if you are new and if you are not getting certain topics what you do is just go through all the classes which we have taken from the 1st of january you can uh, uh, this uh, subscribe this channel subscription is totally free okay so you just uh, subscribe the channel and watch the videos around half an hour videos are there so all the topics whatever topics you are not uh, getting or you have any difficulty you can find all the topics as well as if you have any doubt any one of you have any doubt you are most welcome here in the chat box we are here to answer you okay that fine should i continue this is the uh, 
uh, you can also share with your friends also they can also join us uh, another important thing this is a new channel the new channel and on this platform we are trying to help first year mbbs students this is our motto okay, this is our aim so you have all your you can share this with all your friends let us continue so suppose if we wish to find out this blood flow you can see here uh -huh. flow this is a flow okay so blood flow is equal to amount of the substance taken by any organ divided by rt minus i will explain suppose you can see this is one organ suppose we are talking about heart okay we want to we wish to get the blood flow okay so what we have to do is you can see here one so if we want to calculate blood flow blood flow is equal to q that is amount of the substance taken suppose the, this organ is getting four oxygen molecules this is arterial blood has four oxygen molecules okay from which two are taken by heart okay and two are there in the venous blood so you can definitely easily calculate amount of flow okay? so flow is equal to <coughs> the principle here is <coughs> sorry amount of the flow flow to any organ is equal to amount of the substance taken by that particular organ divided by arteriovenous difference of the oxygen this way we can easily calculate this cardiac output now two fixed principle also there are two methods direct method and indirect method. how direct and indirect i will explain direct method two fixed principle okay fixed principle you have to remember these three things are there blood flow to any organ is equal to amount of the oxygen taken by the organ divided by arteriovenous oxygen difference okay fine now here what we do is in direct method we will measure pulmonary blood flow means blood flow to the lung okay now blood flow to the lung please be attentive this is quite difficult thing here so blood flow to the lung you can see here okay blood is flowing to the so, sorry here here this way that is going to the lung pulmonary artery okay from right ventricle now this pulmonary blood flow is equal to right ventricular output i will explain suppose you can see here this is your <laughs> right atrium right ventricle left atrium left ventricle okay so from right ventricle your pulmonary artery starts okay so whatever amount of blood is flowing to the pulmonary artery is equal to amount of the blood that is ejected by right ventricle so is equal to your right ventricular output okay and right ventricular output is equal to left ventricular out output as i told you cardiac output on both the sides are equal okay so this way we can measure cardiac output okay now so pulmonary blood flow as i told you is equal to amount of oxygen taken by the lungs divided by arteriovenous oxygen difference now here very important thing if we are talking about arterial oxygen okay we require to get the oxygen content of pulmonary vein okay, because as all, we all know pulmonary vein has got oxygenated blood and when we wish to get the venous blood oxygen that is equal to pulmonary artery oxygen okay so this way we can calculate now very important thing here is arterial oxygen content okay they, that can be measured how we can measure the arterial oxygen content for that we can take any artery from the body and we can get the oxygen content okay because all the arteries they have same oxygen. but when we wish to get the venous blood sample okay, for that what we have to do is we require to get the venous blood sample that is collected by placing one catheter the catheter is inserted forearm vein here you can see okay two forearm vein the superior vena cava then right atrium right ventricle then it will going to your pulmonary artery 
and have to collect blood from pulmonary artery and this blood is venous blood okay and now we have to calculate the cardiac output or you can say pulmonary blood flow that is equal to amount of oxygen taken divided by arteriovenous oxygen difference okay this is so left ventricular output is equal to we have calculated but here disadvantage here about this uh, this is the same thing as i told you this is the method okay oxygen consumption amount of oxygen consumption is equal to about 2 ml per minute divided by arteriovenous oxygen difference arterial oxygen that is 19 ml per deciliter and venous is 14 ml per deciliter so the difference is 5 ml per day okay so you can calculate this is your calculation and you will get the cardiac out 5 liters per minute okay fine now what are the disadvantages of direct method by direct method is not used one of the very important disadvantage that is invasive method all the risk of invasion are there which are the risk when you are invasing you are just inserting catheter from the forearm vein to the heart up to okay which are the disadvantages one that is chances of infection are there okay directly you are inserting catheter so chances of hemorrhage are also there these are the disadvantages because of invasive method that is one thing second during the whole procedure patient is conscious so because of the anxiety and all sympathetic activities then that results in increase the cardiac output. Okay, so that is second disadvantage. Third, because this catheter enters in the right ventricle, so it may irritate your right ventricle. Okay, it results in ventricular fibrillation. Ventricular fibrillation if the catheter irritates your ventricle. Okay, so these are the disadvantages. This is the reason why direct method is not used. Now, indirect method with fixed principle. Okay? So, here the principle is same. So, your formula would be same. Cardiac output is equal to amount of. Here, very important difference is instead of oxygen, we are taking not the oxygen, we are taking carbon dioxide. Amount of carbon dioxide output divided by arteriovenous carbon dioxide difference. Okay? So, this way we can carbon dioxide output, we have to calculate 200 ml per minute and arterial and venous partial pressure of carbon dioxide we can get and we can easily measure cardiac output by indirect method using fixed principle okay so this is the second thing now so this is first method second is indicator or dye dilution how the cardiac output is measured by dye dilution see here the name itself suggests dye is injected this is also invasive method okay here you can see indicator dye is injected what is the principle here whenever we are injecting dye known amount of dye suppose 5 milligram of dye is injected okay after that this dye will pass through heart first okay because it is injected in one of the large vein so vein first it enters into the heart and then it goes to pulmonary circulation and then it appears in our general circulation so what we have to do just have to take inject the dye and we have to take samples of the blood at the interval of uh, you can say that uh, at the interval of very less uh, time for example 20 seconds uh, sorry for example 2 to 5 seconds interval okay sorry and the samples are taken and when we are getting this the blood okay then we have to calculate cardiac output by the formula. Okay, so, and along with that, we have to measure mean concentration of dye. So, three things we require. One, that is time when dye enters in the circulation. Second thing, we require mean concentration of the dye. Okay. And third thing, we require that is how much dye we injected, quantity. So we can calculate the blood flow by this values. Okay, I'll explain how. So blood flow is calculated by the formula. You can see quantity of the dye injected divided by mean concentration of dye and time required for the first passage of dye. Okay. Now, so now which dye is ideally used? The dye which is used must remain in the circulation during the test. It will not come out of the circulation. 
that is one criteria second thing it should not be toxic not harm our body it should easily mix with the blood so we can get the idea about the cardiac output can be easily measured also how much dye is there we must measure easily it should not change our hemodynamics blood circulation it should not change the cardiac output output also okay and this dye itself should not be changed by the body because we have to measure the dye suppose the dye is uh, removed by the body or that is excreted by our liver or kidney so the, so we cannot be able to uh, measure the dye okay here dyes used are you can remember the name advanced blue dye that is t1824 or radioactive isotope dyes are used for this method okay this is also invasive method now what is the procedure as i told you first of all take a sample from the vein antiquivital vein then 5 mg of dye is to be taken now this 5 mg of the dye is mixed in the blood sample now again the same blood is injected back into the body blood containing dye is injected back into the body okay and after injection at the interval of every 2 seconds we have to take the blood sample and we have to find out when this dye appears in our circulation. I'll explain how you can see. You can see here. After that, every two seconds, if every at the interval of every two seconds, if we are uh, at the interval of every two seconds when we are measuring the dye concentration, okay, what happens? Hello, be motivated. Welcome to my class. You also have a good name. Be motivated. Nice name. Now, so you can see here, we have measured the amount of concentration of dye. Dye concentration in the blood. You can see here. Another thing, what we require is when the dye first appears. Okay. In the circulation, this is your 39 to 40 seconds. You can see here. And second thing is mean concentration of dye. You can see here mean around average here 1.6 milligram per liter. Okay, so we have all the values. Now we can calculate the blood flow. Blood flow F is equal to Q upon C. So now Q is equal to quantity of the dye injected. We are knowing we have injected 5 milligram of dye. Then this is Q. C is mean concentration. We are knowing mean concentration of dye that is 1.6 milligram per liter and time duration that is 39 seconds we require this duration in minutes so 39 divided by 60 if we put all this value we will be able to calculate cardiac output okay fine so this is about your second method first method fixed principle second method that is indicator or dye dilution third inhalation of inert gas certain gases are allowed to inhale commonly used gases are nitrous oxide and acetyl lithium these are the gases they are used okay? and uh, after that quantity of the gas which is absorbed in a given time that is measured partial pressure of the gas in the alveolar air is measured and solubility of the gas and by this three value we can calculate cardiac output okay so this way we can calculate cardiac output so this is third method fourth method is thermodilution method okay thermodilution here Principle is little bit same with the same like uh, 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 dye dilution okay? uh, injection of a dye. But the thing here is we have we are not going to inject anything here. Inst instead of this indicator dye, we are just inserting a uh, saline, cold saline. We are using okay? here. Okay? Now, so what we do. Is just you insert or just uh, uh, insert cold saline okay? and whatever change they occur in the body temperature blood temperature of the pulmonary artery that is measured and that that you that is used to measure cardiac output i will explain how so here you can see what is the procedure for that first of all there are uh, two thermostat thermostats is to measure the temperature two thermostats are kept one that is in the inferior vena cava and second in the pulmonary artery okay? 
so now after that what we do we have to inject known amount of cold saline okay, here and you have to measure the temperature of the blood which is entering to the heart to inferior vena cava and second temperature of the blood coming out to pulmonary artery okay and cardiac output measured by the same principle that is q is equal to what is the what was the formula sorry f is equal to q upon c okay but here instead of di we are knowing the amount of the cold saline okay as well as we are knowing the temperature which is there and the change in the temperature change in the temperature is inversely related to blood flow when blood flow is more change is less because blood is flowing fast hmm. good rida good f is equal to q upon ct uh, i was i was trying to this q uh, your uh, this method of uh, fixed principle i was confused sorry so you can see here good you are taking interest and you are knowing that is very good i am happy to do okay fine so you can see here when the change in the temperature is more means blood flow is less because saline is cold saline when the blood is flowing less through the organ means your change in the temperature more so you can say that change in the temperature is inversely proportional to blood flow means when blood flow is more less change in the temperature okay and shape and the time course of the change in the temperature of this uh, pulmonary artery we can easily be calculate cardiac so this is the other method now uh, here advantage of cold saline method that is we need not require to inject anything we need not require to withdraw the blood and inject the dye and all then we can be able to measure the cardiac output now let us repeat which method we have first that is we have used first method that is fixed principle direct and indirect method second that is indicator or dye dilution method third that is third is which method we have discussed hmm? third is can anybody inhalation of inert gases fourth one that is thermo dilution okay now next one very important now it is commonly one of the very important method that is doppler echocardiography okay this is one of the very important method this is non invasive no invasion is there echocardiography is a common procedure for so many other uh, you can say diagnostic procedures of the cardiac pathology okay it does not require any kind of injection does not require any saline does not require any dye anything here what is the principle ultrasonic waves with a frequency of 2.25 mhz gigahertz they are emitted by the transducer here this is the transducer they emit your ultrasonic waves okay and this waves is a trans transmitted as well as whatever waves are coming back they are also received by this okay so this is the main basic of your echocardiography okay you can see here this waves are trans through the transducers this waves they pass okay fine now and uh, whenever they pass through this flowing blood they are reflected and when they reflect back they produce echo sound and this sound is collected by again this transducer because of this echo we can be able to know the blood flow okay this calculated that is there in the instrument easily calculate not only you can calculate cardiac output other parameters are also measured and diastolic volume and systolic volume ejection fraction motion the heart wall motion which wall moving fast which wall is not move that all the things measured by doppler echocardiography so it gives us an idea about the movement of ventricular wall okay whether suppose uh, is, uh i'll give you example suppose somebody is having anterior wall mi so an anterior wall mi so anterior wall motion is reduced so you can easily measure with the help of echocardiography okay so movement of ventricular wall movement of the septum okay this also can be measured by echocardiography 
that is one also it is used to measure velocity of blood flow with velocity flowing okay volume of the blood flow volume of the blood which is going through valve if there is any abnormality in the valve then also find out suppose there is mitral stenosis mitral regurgitation or aortic stenosis that also you can easily be measured okay and we can measure as i told you and diastolic volume and systolic volume cardiac output like ejection fraction we measure so it is one of the very important techniques for and nowadays it is doppler eco okay, i repeat five methods we discussed one that is your fixed principle second indicator or dye dilution method third Third, that is your hmm, which is the third one? Can anyone inhalation of inert gases? Fourth one, that is thermodilution. Fifth one, that is Doppler echocardiography. Two other are left commonly not used. Last two one, one that is very good. Ridha Trivedi inhalation of inert gas. Good, good, very good. Hmm? Nice to nice to get answers from my students. Okay, eco, very good. Nice. Now, last two, pelistocardiography, and last one that is cine cine radiography. These are not commonly used, but because we have to understand all the methods, I'll explain. Here, what they do is bal ballistic recoil. It works on the Newton's third law. What is it? When our heart is pumping, okay? so when heart pumps in aorta and pulmonary artery, what happens? Because of the pumping of heart, okay, there is recoil, plastic recoil that is known as ballistic recoil of pump. And this recoil that is graphically recorded. Okay, you can get kind of recording, and by this recording, one can be easily measured cardiac. Output. Not used, uh, practically, it is not used because this is not very much, uh, this is significantly idea about cardiac output most reliable most effective method is our two or echocardiograph doppler eco okay fine this ballistic recoil pulsation they can be recorded graphically and from this graphics yes Riddha, doppler echocardiography is the best way but for the sake of completion of all the methods we must know because we will be having question that uh, uh, write down methods for measurement of cardiac output. So you have to write down all the seven methods, okay? Indirect as well as direct. Okay? This is ballistocardiograph. And last one that is the name is easy. Cine radiographic test. Cinema. <laughs> what is cinema? That is motion. So motion pictures are created. Motion picture record radiography means first uh, x ray images are taken, and these x ray images are, are made in motion. Am I clear? So, x ray images are taken and they are in motion. Motion pictures they are recorded, okay? and successive images they appear, and these images they appear on the fluoroscopic screen. Okay? And from this can calculate cardiac output. So this is your CA radiographic technique. I repeat all the seven techniques starting with first one. If you can, you can also answer. Hmm? First is fixed principle. Okay, first one. Second is indicator or dye dilution method. Okay. Third is inhalation. Very good, very good. Inhalation of inert gas fourth one tell me fourth one is thermodilution method very good fifth one echocardiography sixth one waiting this ballisto cardiography and seven is a radiograph okay am i clear uh if uh, so thank you thanks for being with me in my class like my class you can like it you can share with all your friends and you can subscribe our channel okay uh, one more thing 
uh, those who are new learner for them we have our uh, senior radiography very good for our new learner there is one announcement i have my special class special class on arterial blood pressure that is on saturday i will share the link in this chat box and other class regarding mcqs of blood pressure and cardiac output whatever we have learned all the mcq track on sunday okay so you have to go to app and you have to attend the class i will share this link in the chat box okay uh in the chat box i will share the link so you can watch it and uh, you can uh, enroll for the same okay so i am just sharing it on the uh, chat box okay so be with me okay thank you thanks for being with me